Okay, so then with this, we are able to solve our both of both the problems. Now, consecutively after solving both the problems on how we are able to read or write data from the device, so how we are able to um, get the data or put the data into the disk and how CPU interacts with that, it then brings me to my next question. of OS communicates with device or devices. So now we can have, this is just one device, right? We have those multiple other devices as we saw in the hierarchical diagram where we have different bus and different devices attached to each bus. Now data could be stored in memory, data could be stored on on NVMe SSD, data could be stored on Optin SSD, data could be stored on one hard disk versus on other hard disk. Now, how operating system that is a central entity handling all this um, or managing all this mess that's going all around in different devices at different time? How does this OS communicate with this with these devices? So there are two different ways. One is explicit IO instructions. Where while this explicit IO instructions are nothing new, these are this is a way which is being used since IBM mainframes, the computers that used to be size of our room. And yet it just had the power of what we held in our watches today. Not even not even phone or laptop. So whatever things that you could do on your watch, you could do on that computer and the size of those computers used to be rooms, giant. So since those IBM mainframes um, or operating systems communicate with devices, even though IBM main, mainframes in those operating system communicate with, communicated with devices using explicit IO instructions. Um, one example, of what do we mean by explicit IO instruction could be something instructions like in and out with device parts and data. So which is the device that you want to either put the data into it or get the data outside it and if you want to put the data into it, what is that data that you want to put into it? Or what is the data that you want out of it? So some commands like this. Second way of how OS communicates with devices is by using memory mapped IOS. Whenever I, I mention devices, I mean storage devices. That's obvious because we are in storage systems class, right? or at least in storage systems module, module in which we are discussing storage system. So memory mapped IO is the second way. What happens in memory mapped IO is hardware makes device registers available as if they were memory locations. So to access a particular register, OS issues a load that is to read or store that is to write the address because hardware
then route for load store instructions to the device instead of memory. There's this notion of making the memory addresses uh, available as if the device was placed inside the memory. And then whenever any load or store instructions as, as we would access the memory are done on, on these range of addresses, rather than actually just keeping it in memory, these operations are then translated to the operations on the device. That's the concept of memory map data. So either these OS communicates with these storage devices, either by using explicit IO instructions like in and out or by using memory map data. Now, finally, these are the intuitive series of questions as we are dealing with in this, in, in this discussion. This could be the questions that are naturally rising in your mind as we proceed. So um, the, the next question is how to access data from different types of storage devices, the smart one, right? So now we know that these devices are uh, spanned across different bus in a hierarchy. We know how to interact with these devices. What are the challenges in order to interact, get data into or get data out of these devices, what we need to do? the process of pulling, interrupt, all that, waiting while the device is working on the task that we are to that. We know how to communicate with devices using explicit IO or by using memory mapped IO, how the operating system communicates with these storage devices. Now that leads us to our next question, how to access data from different types of storage devices. Now there is, as we have seen, there is not just a single type of device. The only storage device, if it was hard disk, then it makes our life easier. But unfortunately, in today's world, not. You have many types of storage devices, NVMe SSDs, Optane SSDs, hard disk, even hard disk. And SSDs have many varieties within themselves, as we, as we would see further in this lecture series. So how do we deal with these different types of storage devices? Well, one notion is to keep things very simplistic. Come up with this generic IO stack that could be used by multiple devices all in the same way. And all the devices could be able to interact with operating system by using this generic stack. The benefit of this is, well, we don't have to keep programming a different operating system when we want to talk with or when we want to handle one specific type of storage device, right? Then we would have so many operating systems and so many versions because there are so many devices. So we can have the single operating system that can handle multiple devices. But the disadvantage is now, well, some devices could be more advanced than others. It could provide some advanced features which other devices might not be providing. But in this generic process of coming up with this generic IO stack, we are losing those advanced capabilities of those, those more better versions of devices. So this concept of generic IO stack is interesting, but it is not the solution to all the problems as we have seen before. Now, can you try drawing this generic IO stack? Let's take a break.
or you're able to come up with anything generic, generic enough to be compatible with multiple devices or multiple storage devices. Hopefully, yes, you have some drawing of your own. But I'm, I'm going to draw the concept behind it. And the concept of making things generic is an age old concept, concept of abstraction. Now, if this rings bells in, in, your, in your mind, then yes, with the concept of abstraction, we could incorporate multiple different kinds of devices and make them all look very similar. So by using this concept of abstraction, what we are doing is we could have our program that interacts with file system and program has very high level of abstraction because in your program the commands that you any c plus plus or python or java program that you write you just open a file read a file uh write a file close a file right so that's a very high level abstraction you are not bothered with the detail of which device is your right going to which address and which device is your right going to how does that device stores the data for example a hard disk as we would see in the upcoming lectures stores the data in terms of spindle or the disk while an ssd stores the data in terms of pages inside the block so we are not bothered with any of these details while we are writing program, rather we are just using a very simplistic abstraction of reading and writing a file. Now this file system then takes the operations to block device driver. or let's, it's not particularly a device driver, but just a block layer because it's still an operating system side. Why we have a block layer is because we assume that most of the storage devices are block devices, which in last couple of years have been challenged. We would also see the storage devices that are not block devices. Those are recently invented in further lectures of this series. But until just last couple of years, most of our storage devices used to be block devices. So we can comfortably insert this layer of block layer here that converts the files. So it takes files as an input and it converts the files into blocks. Now these blocks are then fed into device drivers. Device drivers are sometimes you would have some error in things might not be showing up as we expect on your screen and, and there would be something like, oh, you had to install a new device driver for things to work correctly. So device driver is not a hardware, but it is firmware or still a piece of software that runs on hardware. Of the storage device. So then each storage device has a specific device driver just built for that device. Then the device driver sends the command to maybe an IO controller. It could be one of the component in most of the distributed storage system as reliability is one of the big concern. So we have RAID controllers and that's an example of, a, of an IO controller. So the device driver could interact with this IO controller, but at this level of interaction, 
there is no abstraction because we are not interacting in terms of files, but rather we are interacting in terms of the bits of zeros and ones and the location on the device. That location could be as a, a string of page to which the data is written or read in an SSD or the sector on hard disk, something like that. So the IO controller then helps us to actually perform the operation on the device. It interacts with the device. It could be your hard disk, your SSD, things like that. At this level, as I said, there is no abstraction. The um, level at which we are interacting is either the pages on the device, the cylinders in the hard disk, the tracks on the hard disk, the sectors on the hard disk, and this granularity of information. So then this forms our IO stack, where you have going from a very high level of abstraction of just, just reading and writing a file, to actually accessing that data on the device at uh, in, in a physical at a physical level. This IO stack has, as you will see here, has multiple layers, file system, block layer, device driver, controller, and finally the device. The advantage of such a generic IO stack is well, we don't have to worry about uh, designing a new operating system for every new device that we want to work with. But the disadvantage of such generic stack is also significant, which includes speciality. of devices may be lost. For example, there are few storage devices that have this explicit internal characteristic of reporting much more detailed error characteristics. But if we have a, such a generic IO stack for all the devices, probably we have very generic error um, resistors and in which a device could report if there is any error or not. Maybe it's just a yes or no. In that case, we are losing all the details of why that error happened, when that error happened, what would be the reason behind that, or how that error could be the most significant or non-significant, something like that. And the second big disadvantage, which is very, very practical, is device drivers for each type of device constitute significant version of in OS. So if you look into the code of operating system, Linux operating system is open source for you to uh, download online and then look into the code. If you dive yourself into the code, you would see that about 70% of that code is just device, it's just handling device drivers. And this is because there are just so many devices and each device needs to have its own drivers, which constitutes major portion of any operating system. And even worse part from my experience about these device, large portion of device driver codes is most of these device drivers are written by amateurs. So um, it's one of the significant cause of any bug or errors in the crash of operating system. If you research in the domain of operating system or if, you're if you like to research in it or work in it in future, 
come talk to me and um, if you get your hands on on this Linux operating system, you would experience it firsthand. So whenever you have any kernel crash, I would recommend to go and see the device driver portion of your operating system. Something might be going crazy with that. So, okay, that concludes the concepts that I wanted to discuss in our today's lecture. Now, uh, that brings me to the topic of discussion. As you know that the topic of discussions are talked by me in the lectures and that's why you would have to interestingly follow the whole lecture until the end. It could be revealed anywhere in between, but if you are with me throughout this lecture, then you know that I didn't reveal the topic of discussion yet. So that's the time now to reveal the topic of discussion. We will have two topic of discussions. So your each, each of your comment needs to go over these both topics. You would post just a single comment with covering both these topics into that. The first topic that you want to cover in the discussion is we saw in this lecture all the examples of having this process or CPU and disk with those diagrams where we have process one and then process two. We saw the process of polling, the process of interrupt, the process of using DMA with these diagrams. What happens when you have more than 10 processes? Are there any new challenges that you could that you could think of when we have more than 10 processes? Or uh, will we be able to solve all the challenges of this high number of processes with the same concept? Or is there anything new that you could, the new problems that you could think of as well as what will be your anticipated solutions to these problems? That's your first topic of discussion. Apart from this, the second thing that you want to write your post on or focus the discussion post on is we saw this very generic um, IO stack, which had the program, file system, block layer, device driver, IO controller, and finally the device. Now your uh, task is to go online, Google Linux IO stack. As we know that Linux is an open source operating system, the IO stack diagram of Linux, you should be able to get your hands on a couple of images that pops up as a result of this Google search. Look into those diagrams of Linux IO stack and um, see if you can make equivalence between this generic IO stack that we discussed with components that you see on the next IO stack. And your task to include things in this discussion is what are the things that you didn't see being included that you notice in that Linux IO stack, but not, on, not in this generic IO stack that we discussed. And what not just by mentioning the components or the list of components, that's not the purpose of this discussion. You can mention a couple of components, but explain the operations. So do your digging online, search what are these new components that are not included in this generic IO stack, but included in Linux IO stack. And what is the purpose of those components or what do they do? Your task is to explain that in your discussion post. So a single discussion post with covering both these topics of having the problem of more than 10 processes. How would the challenges or the problems that we discussed um, thrive through in this that we talked about in this lecture? And the second, how, what are the new components that Linux IO stack has that we do not discuss in the generic IO stack and what is the functionalities of these components. That's it. That concludes our today's lecture and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.